Okay, so we have c plus 4 minus 3c minus 2 equals 0. We're going to add 2 to both sides. c plus 4 minus 3c is equal to 2. We're going to combine like terms on both sides. It will be negative 2c plus 4 is equal to 2. Then we're going to subtract 4. Subtract 4 on both sides. Negative 2c is equal to negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 2, and c is going to be equal to 1. So our answer is going to be 1. But before I go ahead and say I have the right answer, I'm going to go ahead and check that. So c plus 4 minus 3c minus 2 equals 0. So I'm going to insert the answer that I got for c. So 4 minus 3 times 1 minus 2 equals 0. And then I'm going to do... 4 minus 3 minus 2 equals 0. 1 plus 1 minus 2 equals 0. 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. And that is correct. So my answer is 1. Perfect. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go to the next problem. It says graph the solution of y minus 2 is greater than 1 on our number line. So y minus 2 is greater than 1. I want the y to be by itself. The y is not by itself right now. So what I'm going to do is add 2 to both sides. So now it says y is greater than 3. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this. So because this is a greater than sign, whenever you have a greater than sign or a less than sign, the circle is going to be open. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my graphs. And I'm going to see this circle is closed, so it's not A. This circle is closed, so it's not C. Okay, so we need an open circle because it's a greater than or less than sign. So it's either going to be B or D. So if we go ahead and read this, again, it says Y is greater than 3. So we are going to start at the number 3. So the 3 is right here. And all the Y's are greater than. So it's going to be all the numbers that are greater than 3. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So the answer is going to be B. An open circle with an arrow going to the right with all the numbers that are greater than 3. All right, so which of the following is the solution to the equation x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0? So I'm going to go ahead and write that x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay. So now I want to break it down into two binomials. I can break down the x squared by putting x and x. And then I have to figure out what numbers go inside. So in order to find those numbers, I need to find two numbers that are going to multiply to equal 5. So two numbers that multiply to equal that last number, which is 5. And then also two numbers that when you add them, they equal that middle number, which is negative 6. Okay, so... If I multiply negative 5 and negative 1, that's equal to positive 5. And if I add negative 5 plus negative 1, that's equal to negative 6. So my answer must be negative 5 and negative 1. Okay, so how do we solve this? Well, we set each of them equal to 0. So x minus 5 equals 0 and x minus 1 is equal to 0. So we go ahead and solve this by getting the x by itself. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. So x is equal to 5. And then we're going to solve the second equation by adding 1 to both sides. And x is equal to 1. So the answers to this solution is x equals 5 or x equals 1. And so our answer choice is going to be D. Because it says which of the following is a solution to the equation. So they just wanted one of them. And so it's x equal to 5. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and let's go ahead and go to our next question, question number four. So it says, what is the value of the algebraic expression if x is equal to 1 half, y is equal to negative 1, and z is equal to 2? So this is the expression. So I'm going to write it out, 6x, y squared, z. And then they tell us what each of these variables are equal to. So x is equal to 1 half. So we're going to put 1 half on the outside. 
y is negative 1, so we put negative 1 squared, z is 2, and then we're going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to put a little multiplication sign on the inside, so I remember that whenever you have variables close to each other, that means they're being multiplied. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and follow PEMDAS. So PEMDAS states that we have to do what's inside the parentheses first, and inside the parentheses we have to do the exponents. So negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 squared. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then 1 times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So now we're going to go ahead and bring down what was outside the parentheses. So we have 6 times 1 half times 2. So 6 times 1 half is the same as saying what is 1 half of 6. 1 half of 6 is 3. And 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So our answer is going to be 6. So anytime you're inserting values into an expression, and now you have values for each of the variables, you want to go ahead and follow the rules of the order of operations, or PEMDAS. PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication or division, addition or subtraction. Just remember with multiplication or division, it's whatever comes first. And same thing with addition or subtraction, whichever one comes first. Okay, great job, you guys. So let's go ahead and go to question number five. It says, which of the following is equivalent to 8 minus 5 divided by 2 to third power? So again, we're going to follow the order of operations, and we're going to see what answer we get. So the first rule is to do the parentheses. What's inside the parentheses? 8 minus 5, that's equal to 3. 3 divided by 2 to the third power. The next step is exponent. 2 to the third power is the same as saying 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So 2 to the third power is now 8. So it'll be 3 divided by 8. So you can write 3 divided by 8 by putting 3 over 8. Because anytime you have a fraction, it's the same as saying 3 divided by 8. Okay, so our answer is going to be A. Okay, great job, you guys. Let's go ahead and go to question number six. Factor completely, x squared minus x minus six. Okay, so we did part of this earlier when we said that we would have to break down this trinomial into two binomials. We break down the x squared by placing x and x. And do you remember what we have to do in order to find these two values? Yep, you have to two numbers multiply to equal negative six and those same two numbers have to equal that middle number well that middle number is missing but it's actually an invisible one so it'd be negative one those two numbers have to add to so what two numbers multiply to get negative six but add to equal negative one well if you do negative three and positive two negative three times two is negative six but negative 3 plus 2 is equal to negative 1. So it must be negative 3 and plus 2. So because they're asking us to factor and not to find the solution, factoring, we just leave it at this level. So our answer would be x minus 3, x plus 2. So x minus 3, x plus 2. And although it's written in a different um, order, it's still the same answer. For example, 3 times 2 is the same as saying 2 times 3. So it doesn't matter what order this is written in because it's multiplication. So in the answer, it was written x plus 2, x minus 3. But these numbers still stayed the same. So our answer is going to be C. All right, so let's go ahead and go to problem number 7. It says simplify the following expression. So. We're going to do 3x to the 4th power y squared over x, y to the 2nd power. Okay, so earlier we talked about when you have a fraction, 3 over 8, it's the same as saying 3 divided by 8. And we're going to apply that same concept to this expression. We are going to divide the top by the bottom. I like to separate it though, so... 3 is going to be divided by whatever number is on the bottom. x to the 4th is going to be divided by the x. And y squared is going to be divided by y squared. 
So let's take these one at a time. So there's an invisible one here. So it's going to be 3 divided by 1, which is equal to 3. Then we're going to do x to the 4th over x. That's the same as saying x to the 4th power divided by x to the 1st power. When you're dividing exponents, you subtract them. So it would be x, 4 minus 1, which would be equal to x to the 3rd power. So we would write x to the 3rd power next to it. Then we're going to go ahead and do y squared divided by y squared. y squared divided by y squared. That's the same as saying y squared divided by y squared. Okay, and then you remember you subtract the exponents. So it would be 2 minus 2 would be y to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is just equal to 1. So the answer would just be equal to 1. So you can multiply that by 1. Or you could just say 3x to the third power. And so our answer is going to be a. So just remember, divide it up like this. I like to separate it by the lines and then just go ahead and divide. Divide the numbers, then divide each variable that's the same. All right, guys, you're doing so well. We only have three more problems to go. So problem number eight. It says, which of the following is equivalent to the expression 3ab times negative 5ab. So I'm going to go ahead and write that larger. 3ab negative 5ab. So we're just going to go ahead and multiply. So I'm going to multiply 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. a times a. So a times a. They're both to the first power. Anytime you're multiplying variables, you add the exponents. So it would be a to the second power. And then we do b times b. So b to the first power times b to the first power. Again, you're adding the exponents, so it would be b squared. So our answer would be negative 15a squared b squared. So the answer is going to be d. All right, let's go ahead and go to number 9. Our last two questions. What percent of the grid is shaded? Okay. So if you look at this, they're each of these bars, they're equal to 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and then we're going to count individually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 45. Whenever you see a block like this, it's a total of 100. So 45 out of 100 is the same as saying 45 hundredths as a decimal. And you can move the decimal place over to the right two times, one, two, and add a percentage sign. So it would be 45%. So our answer is going to be C. So then it says, which of the following is the equation of a line that passes through negative 2, negative 1, and negative 4, negative 3? Okay, so a line is y is equal to mx plus b. B is the y-intercept, M is the slope. Okay, so normally the y-intercept starts with a zero, and then there's a number here. Because neither of these points start with zero, then neither of them are the y-intercept. So let's go ahead and then instead try to find the slope. So the slope formula is M is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and I put these in order. So I start with the least and then I go to the greatest. So negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. The reason why I order it like this is because if we were making a line, you would go past this point first and this point second. So. This is going to be my first point. This is going to be my second point. So I'm going to go ahead and label them. So this would be x1, y1, x2, y2. So let's go ahead and find the slope. So we're going to start with y2, negative 1, minus y1, minus negative 3. And then x2, negative 2, minus negative 4. When you have two negative signs next to each other, they become a plus sign. So it would be 
negative 1 plus 3 over negative 2 plus 4. Negative 1 plus 3, that's equal to positive 2. And then negative 2 plus 4, that's going to be positive 2 as well. 2 over 2 is the same as saying 2 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. So we know that our slope, or the m, is going to be equal to 1. So when we write our equation, it's going to be y equals mx plus b. The m is just going to be 1. So we can look at our answer choices, and we can eliminate a, and we can eliminate c, because this is 1 half, but it's supposed to be a 1. So now we have to choose between choice B and choice D. Well, how do we do that? Let's erase some of this so that we can have some nice space. So we now have an equation, y is equal to 1x plus B. We also have a point that we can use. Let's go ahead and use this point, negative 2, negative 1. Because it's a point, the negative 2 represents x, negative 1 represents the y. So we can replace y with negative 1 is equal to 1, and then we can replace x with negative 2 plus b. Because b is the only variable that's left, we can figure out what b is equal to based on the point. So negative 1 is equal to 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus b. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. 1 is equal to b. So now we know that 1 is equal to b, and we saw earlier that m is equal to 1. So now we can go ahead and rewrite the equation. y is equal to mx plus b. So y is equal to 1x plus 1. It could also be written y is equal to x plus 1. So our answer is going to be b. All right, guys, that was a lot of work. I just wanted to be able to go over this practice test with you guys, and I will be back with more examples for you guys that are similar to this one. I hope this helped you guys, and I'll see you in my next one.